Welcome to NG Church Network Podcast. We are capturing stories of strength, encouragement and comfort as we pursue spirit-led lives. Uh, Joseph, great having you uh, with me. We're just going to have a conversation uh, and let people listen in a little bit. Yeah. So 2018, yeah. you lost a job you'd done for a number of years, which was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. 2019, the church that you were leading closed down. Yeah. And then beginning of 2020, we move into a pandemic. It's mm. fair to say that you'd had a real brutal experience end of 2018, 2019, and then mm. we go into a pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. talk to us uh, the impact those, the combined effect on you. Yeah. How did, yeah. what impact did it have on you? Yeah. Um, when you're in it, you're not, you're not aware of uh, how deep the, the hurt and, and the damage is done. Mm-hmm. But on reflection, one looks at it and says, you've done a job for 10 years. New management comes in and they take you through an interview process for your job. And they tell you, you are not good enough. And at the time, what did you think? I know looking back, but at the time? At the time, I thought to myself, well, could be that my time here is done and I need to prepare myself for something new. But to be fair, in my own heart, I was saying, now something is not right here and uh, I've been hard done by. And, yes, you've and, done the job for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, y- yes, you, you, you walk away and say, God, what next? This is a shock to the system. Mm. So, not long after, I, I take time out and travel to Zimbabwe mm. because earlier in the same year, I had lost my dad. Yes. And, and so here am I traveling and saying to myself, let me just go there and spend a bit of time and reflect and see the new direction that I need to be pursuing when I get back. And through that time, we'll come, we'll come on to that, but through that time, uh, 2019, were you aware just what an impact it had had on you? I wasn't aware at all. I wasn't aware at all because uh, I, thought, I thought I was the resilient, adaptable individual who couldn't be prone to any long-term impact of uh, sudden changes. So here am I carrying on and soldiering on, and yet on reflection, you realize that I'm carrying a lot of uh, hurt and pain, residual grief, yes. which has not been, uh, been adequately healed and restored. And uh, your wife, Star, in that season, did she? What did she view was going on in you? She always came with the analysis that you've had uh, many things happening in your life. You could do with some time out. Yes. And uh, yet, at the same time, there's uh, bread and butter issues, and one needs to be providing for their household. So coming back from the trip in, in, in Zimbabwe, I then started looking for a job, but determined in my heart that uh, the food industry might be a closed chapter Yes. following the, 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 the hurt. Yes. So you looked for some other employment? I looked for some other employment. For a while, I, 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 I get with the post office for the Christmas time mail. Oh, you did sorting. the deliveries, did you? I, and what, it was sorting. Sorting. Oh, okay. Sorting, yes. So that, was, that, that, that made Christmas for us. Yes. But then uh, out of that, we, you start looking elsewhere. So here am I with yet another food industry opportunity, which started in... Uh, in the uh, tail end of May of 2019. Yeah. Similar role as the one that I was on for the 10 years, but on a different setting near Birmingham. Long drive, long hours. One day I'm 
swerving in the road because I'm falling asleep and I say to myself, this is, this cannot uh, continue. And so you're still, you're still dealing with all the loss before and now you, you find yourself in a pressured job. Yeah. It's beyond Birmingham, I think, wasn't it? It was like yes, an hour yes, and a half commute. Yes, yes, it was, it was. And, and on that job, I'm finding that I'm not delivering and I'm not functioning to the same level that I was on the previous role. And in my, in my closing interview, I, I, I say to them, look, I need to get away from this post, sadly, because I feel I'm not myself mm. and I'm not doing you a favor or myself a favor by continuing and and let me just add uh, even at what's probably been one of the lowest points in your adult life i suspect yeah it would probably be one of the lowest yes. points in yes. your there's still a dignity within you that was mindful of them as well as yourself they were keen to find out whether they were the reason for my exit yes and this is HR saying, be open with us. Is it your manager? Mm. On reflection, the manager was known for their, for their slave drive kind of approach to getting things done. Understandably, because of the state that the business was. But they thought that she may have been the reason for me quitting. And they were keen to say, in confidence, tell us if it is. Mm -hmm. And I say to them, look, bless her. She tried to help me as much as she could. Yes. But I believe that I need help. Yes. So we've got a perfect storm going on. We've yeah. got, a, we've got a, a, a job that hasn't worked out. Yeah. We've got you still bruised and battered. Yeah. We've got a ridiculous commute. The job was probably impossible, actually, yes. in hindsight. Yes, yes. And so at that point, uh, give us an insight into how you are feeling emotionally, spiritually, physically. At that point, I'm feeling, I'm feeling drained. I'm feeling, I'm feeling like uh, I'm at a crossroads and I don't know which direction I'm going next. And, uh, and yet at the same time, and I thank God for, for helping me to remain focused on him. I think past experience with God has given me the assurance that whatever it is, he will come through for you. Yes, very good. Uh, and we mustn't dwell too long here because I can hear people thinking, tell us, you know, yeah. where, where's the yeah. encouragement yeah. or yeah. where's the strength, where's the comfort in the yeah. midst of this story? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but, but it's worth just pointing out, we're not, we're not just making this up. This was a, this was a really wilderness moment. A real, a real wilderness moment, a real wilderness moment. And particularly when it comes to closing things that we have cherished over a long time. Mm -hmm. The job for 10 years, church were in the, started in 2009, so we are in, um, in uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. So you're talking 10 years. Yes. And then, and then having to come to terms with the idea that I have to fold this piece of work that I did passionately, knowing and believing that God had assigned for me to be doing. And, the, and, and at the back of your mind, you're saying, God, what next? Mm. Yeah, very good. Good question. Uh, so anyway, you then go to Zimbabwe last year. Yes, we, we, we've jumped a little bit there, but... Yeah, fill in the gaps. Uh, the gap there is now on the career change. We have closed the food industry. Yes. And we're saying, what next? And, and I'm inclined towards uh, teaching. Mm. But in the meantime, I've uh, got myself into an agency work supporting youngsters with uh, autism at a residential school. 
trying the teaching teacher training job I also find myself struggling up to a point where I sit down with the director of the course and they say to me I see a glimpse in you of an excellent teacher but I suspect that you're carrying a heavy load on your mind and it is not helping mm. and I open up to them and say look I've had a, a very rocky few years in the recent past and I suspect it could be the reason that I'm not functioning. She says, I totally agree with you and I, I think you need help. She, she begrudgingly accepts me pulling out of that training program and encourages me to seek help, which I did. Yes. At the same time, for bread and butter issues, I'm at this residential school. Yes. Little do I realize that uh, my being there as well is part of my therapy in some way. But uh, the bigger therapy would come when my wife says, okay, why don't you travel home and connect with family? There's been a number of, of bereavements happening since dad passed. My brother had passed at the end of 2019 and I had not been able to travel for the funeral. Mm. So she impresses that on my heart and makes all the arrangements to make that trip feasible. Hmm. We, book, we book a ticket and uh, lockdown makes it an impossible journey to undertake and uh, we end up with a voucher for a flight in the near future. And I guess that was just crushing because you wanted to travel home. I was desperate to travel home. Yeah. Covid comes and yes, desperately. But. Uh, at that time as well, I'm, I'm soldiering on. And, but one of the key things is that uh, having come out of the church when we have come to Eagle's Nest, I say to myself, this is my resting place. Yes. I do need a break. Yes. And so, so it, became, it became the appropriate resting place. And... Uh, Thanks to John as well, who's, uh, you, you, you've allowed me to, to rest. I remember some of the conversations we have had and I, I've said to you, I don't think I'm ready yet for, for any ministry. Yes, you, you clearly, even in your low points, carried, I believe, an anointing from God and you were helping us set up church through the COVID season and I was... Uh, from my perspective, just desperate to get you uh, ministering amongst the people because I know how much you and Star have got to offer. But at the same time, it was clear, it was clear yeah. that yeah. now wasn't the time. Yeah, now yeah. wasn't the time. We didn't. Know, I didn't know when the time would be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because it had felt like it had gone on a long time. Yes, I mean we we're talking between 2019 and uh, what 2023 when the, the the Zimbabwe trip eventually happens. So, 2022. 2022. Yes. 2022. Yes. It is. Yes. yes. So so that's a long time. Yes, and and from my perspective, you were heading off just on another trip to see family. Glad you were yeah. going and it was opened yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, and you know sometimes a fresh scenery. Yeah. But. Uh, but that was a bit of an unusual experience for you there compared to your other trips. Bit, bit of an unusual one and uh, one which, which uh, you only realise the impact of it as, a, as, a, as you look back. And I'm arriving at our place and uh, we've got this caretaker who had asked for us for a dog. At home, this is your home this in Zimbabwe. This is home in Zimbabwe. Yes. So, Little do I know that he's got us a female dog, which at the time of my arrival is heavily pregnant. <laughs> Caretaker, we part ways with them cordially. 
Big dog, by the way, was it? Was it a big dog? Or big it... dog, uh, what do they call it? They call them uh, Rhodesian Ridgeback. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there she is heavily pregnant. Not long after I've arrived, she gives birth to a litter of 13 <laughs> puppies. And I'm looking after those things. Have you ever looked after a dog before? Never ever. We, 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 in the past, we've had a, a dog in the family, but not uh, dogs to that number. So, so here am I, and uh, I'm alone on the, on the property. Yeah, we, Star had stayed the, with yeah, and Nottingham. Yeah, yeah, Caretaker's yeah. gone. You're alone with yeah, 14 with, dogs now. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. I'm taking care of them. But uh, little do I realize that I'm developing a relationship with them. Hmm. The puppies, as soon as they open their eyes, they recognize me as the one who is feeding them. Mom recognizes me as the one who has now taken over and uh, is the present face, ever present face and uh, provider of food. She confidently lets me close because uh, She's a timid dog when I come in, but uh, in the course of time, she allows me to, to touch her. And uh, I'm feeding them, I'm watching them grow, I'm, I'm washing them with dip to kill fleas and, and uh, such like. So this is day after day? This is day after day. day all these this dogs. This is day after day, all these dogs. Yeah. They are growing. Yes. I'm there for three months. At the end of the three months, they are grown enough and people have come and wanting to buy the, the, the creatures of me. And I've said, <laughs> mm, I'm not selling any of them, but when my time comes, I give them away and remain with uh, two and uh, the mother to make three. Yeah. And then in the time I'm there for the whole three months, I don't feel like uh, I should be attending church at all. In fact, I've met a pastor friend at whose church I had once ministered in my previous visit, and he says, why don't you come and, and do because us... Because this is unthinkable for you, isn't it? Yeah. To miss church. To miss church. Oh, this yes, is unthinkable. Yes. Yeah. So I'm saying to him, well, I need to be honest with you. I'm on a sabbatical i'm resting and and i don't feel it will be right for me to stand up and minister so please i then i then follow it up with a with a text message to say please understand it i've not lost my faith hmm. i'm uh, i'm just resting and and he's is courteous enough to appreciate that do you think you'd arrive there spiritually physically emotionally exhausted on reflection again, I'm saying I'm, I've arrived there exhausted, drained, mm -hmm. needing restoration. Mm -hmm. And little did I know that uh, dogs would be instrumental in that restoration. I'm, I'm, I'm forever taking pictures and sending back to family to say, I'm not lonely as you might think. <laughs> Did they think you'd lost your mind? <laughs> Did they, think they thought you'd lost your mind at this point? I might have to find out from them what, what they were saying. But they, they were polite in saying, oh, wonderful, oh, beautiful. So <laughs> What sure. they were saying to each other would be very well, interesting. Yeah, yeah. What are they saying to each other? <laughs> yeah. So, yes, therapy. I, I, I looked at it on reflection and said that was my healing place. And explain that to me a little bit more. How on earth can you look in after 14 dogs? Yeah. Like when you first told me, I'm sure my eyes yeah. were a little bit wide. Yeah. How, how, can, how can you looking after those dogs lead to you being restored? And this is, this is the strangeness of things. Considering that uh, I, I had... Uh, I'd enrolled on a CBT, this is a cognitive behavior therapy sessions recommended by, by the director of the teacher training program. So I've, I've enrolled in that and 
I've gone through the sessions, but I've come out of it and said, uh, I don't feel like I've made much progress even after the sessions. So it might help lots of people, but for you, it, it, it just didn't. It just didn't, didn't do work. it for me. Yeah. And yet, at the end of my three months, I'm coming out focused. I'm coming out rejuvenated. Do you mean the three months in Zimbabwe? Three months in, Z in Zimbabwe with, yes. the, with the dogs. Yes. I'm coming out with a new zeal and energy for life. Prior, I would uh, go to bed and sleep for a very long time and not have the energy to get up and do things. That was very unlike me. Do you think you were depressed? I was. Mm. I was. Mm. And my wife knew that I was. Mm. And bless her, she, she, she was there for me. Yes. And, and uh, that's why I thank God so much for yeah. her and, and the lengths she went to facilitate my travel. Yes. Uh, I'm appreciative. Yes. I'm appreciative. So these three months looking after the dogs, yeah. but explain to me if you can, I'm not yeah. sure you can particularly, but how, yeah. did, how did helping them minister to you? That's the bit, that's the bit which is a mystery to me. Yes. I know it happened. Yes. But for me to give you the X, Y, Z and, and, and possibly advise and say, look after dogs to get your, <laughs> your depression sorted, I, I couldn't do that. Yes. But for me particularly, yes. I'm looking at it and saying, I've developed an intimate friendship yeah. with creatures which clearly appreciated me and loved me creatures which were keen to be close to me. A case in point, if I were to show some photographs, I've got uh, this litter of puppies who know clearly that they don't step into the house. But I'm in the house and they decide to vacate their kennel and put up on the doorstep because they want to be close to me. Mm. And, and, and I, I look at that, and as soon as I, I'm stepping out of the door, they are all over me, jumping, and, and uh, yeah. So I, I'm looking at that. Even, even the mother, she, she loves going for a walk around the block. And, and uh, as soon as I'm opening the door, she's running around, she's jumping up and down, she's desperate for that walk. If I'm delaying the walk, she looks sad. But if, I, if I'm picking up the keys and calling her name, Tiger is the name. Tiger? Yes. <laughs> she comes running and jumping and she, she, she leads the way. She, she knows the, the, the walk and, and she, she's, she's running in front of me and she looks happy. Yes. So, yes, those were the moments for me. So I, I, I couldn't put a finger to say one, two, three, X, Y, Z, but that was how it worked for me. And, and you came back uh, clearly different, clearly different. Yeah, I could feel it too. Yeah. I could feel it too. And, and with, uh, with uh, a revived, uh, a revived vision and passion for the charity that that uh, we had started in 2016, which had la lain low through the pandemic. Yes, and I'll come back to that in a moment. I yeah. just wanted to read this Bible verse over yeah. over you ministering to the dogs and God ministering to you. This, when you told me it, it just. Uh, Mark 1, 12 and 13, it says this in the message. At once, the same spirit that pushed Jesus into the wild. For 40 days and nights, he was tested by Satan. Wild animals were his companions and angels took care of him. Mm, mm, and mm. Uh, when you told me the story, that yeah. verse just came yeah. to mind yeah. That, yeah. that the Lord was in yeah. this. Yeah. When I looked it up myself, I, I appreciated the, the ministry of the dogs. Mm. 
and I appreciated that uh, there must have been some angelic involvement in my healing and restoration mm. for a purpose. Yes. And, and uh, here am I now positioning myself and asking the question, how does that purpose uh, manifest? Yes. And, and it's a journey of exploration yes. with ministry, with the charity, and still asking the question, what next? Yes. And before we get that, one more question I get, yeah. I guess that might help people just listening to this. Mm. Those that are in a wilderness experience now, yeah. again, yeah. a quote that, yeah. that from John yeah. Ortberg that yeah. I like, yeah. the desert or the wilderness. This yeah. is clearly a wilderness experience. Yeah. It's not, yeah. not just the being in Zimbabwe, but yeah. the, whole the whole episode. Two, two and a half yeah, years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. desert is the place where yeah. you learn to love God for God's sake, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. just milk mm -hmm. and honey. Yeah. So it's a yeah. John Ortberg quote. Yeah. But yeah. What would you say to anybody who's in that confusion of the wilderness right now yes i would say to you that just like the jesus experience he is led by the spirit and it's unique to appreciate that it is the spirit which is leading him into the wilderness yes it might well be that your wilderness experience is actually engineered by god to strengthen you for greater things to come He's coming out of the wilderness and he's beginning the ministry that could not be stopped. Yes. For your wilderness experience, make room for the possibility that it is him leading you and he wants to strengthen you in it, but he wants to take you out of it and bring you to a place of uh, empowered ministry and service to him only if you will be able to within the wilderness experience be able to recognize and acknowledge him in the midst of the challenge on three occasions he is challenged and tempted to make him trip and fall and abort the mission and yet he gives a word of God for each occasion yes. which defeats the agenda of the enemy yes and hearing this from you after what you've been through I hope brings people much comfort so you'd started a charity to do some compassion work in Zimbabwe but that had gone dormant yes but you came back uh, I guess towards the end of your time there and as you arrived back you felt uh God re-anoint you and reappoint you to the purpose. Yes, yes, yes. Coming out, uh, coming back <clears throat> in, in the UK, I'm, I'm, I'm coming away with the vigor, which is wanting to bring out the good that God has invested in my life in a new way, empowered and and prepared to expect good things from him at the time of setting up the charity i'm i'm convinced that there is a god factor in the charity god had spoken to you yes yes i i, I remember we are out in wales at a, at a christian camping site in wales and uh, I take a walk to the hills with, uh, with uh, Dr. U. Osgood and I'm sharing my heart about the charity that God has put in my, my heart to, to begin and he encourages me. And uh, that was the birth of compassion for communities. Yes. And so from, from, from the very inception of the idea I had a sense of the hand of God in it. We put two objects for it, which is to, to relieve poverty, number one, and the second being to promote the Christian faith. Yes. Those yes. two projects. 
or sorry, objects yes. being the thing that we, we, we set ourselves to do. Yes. And explain what's happening. So it's, it's been repurposed since you've got back. Yes. You've built a website, you've set up a crowdfunding yes. page, you've, yes. you've really cracked yes. on with all this reappointed yes. new trustees, all that type of stuff. Yes. Just to explain practically what's happening on the ground in Zimbabwe and what, where you're wanting to go next with yes. it. Yes. Practically what's happening on the ground in Zimbabwe, the two gardens that we're supporting, we have picked one of them and say we want it to be the flagship of the new revived work. They are at a point where they are self-sufficient. They now have a borehole powered by a solar submersible pump. They now have a drip irrigation system. And so has the other, the, the other garden as well, with support from ourselves and uh, another charitable organization based in the US. Yeah. So they are at that point. But the key thing again is what next? But at the moment, they're growing fruit and vegetables, they're gardens that yes. are supporting yes. uh, communities that, that are pretty impoverished, I guess, yes. where food yes. levels are low. This is, this is in the rural, rural areas in Zimbabwe. The, the, the community leaders have opened a space for, for the garden. The concept of community gardens is villagers work together and they share the produce each, each, each village uh, has got a row where they are planting their, their crops for their family, but f to sell as well when they've got surplus. Yes. So both gardens are at that level, but we aspire to take them to the next level of being more commercially viable. Hence the idea of a greenhouse, the greenhouse which will allow them to grow their their vegetables in a controlled environment protected from pests insects and disease and and the adverse weather conditions as well but key is that it is uh, led by the people there and they are working together in this garden that we're focusing on 50 villagers are working on it there's a management committee and we have since put together a board of trustees. We are hoping to get the, the charity registered locally, which will make uh, the working relationship easier between the UK and, and, and Zimbabwe. So that is in place. I've just instructed them to start the process of opening a bank account and uh, then we'll, we'll commence the, the application process. Talking about that, a, an old friend mm. who I met at their mom's funeral, this is somebody I went to primary school with. Oh. I, I took his email on the day. We didn't have much time to talk. I took his email on coming back. I've emailed him to him and told him my heart for the work. He says, I'm an influential journalist in, in the country. I've got access to places of high office. When you are ready, let me know. I will help. Wow. Somebody is already willing to help us with the registration process. Yes. So I'm looking at all this and saying, God, you are faithful. Yes. So I'm, I'm saying he will put people along the journey of your life. Some of them he will have planted way back with the knowledge that they will come through for you so many years later. And that's, that's for me, is a testimony of how faithful he is. Yes. Yes, the right people around your life. If people want to know more, they can go to www.comp4, number four, com.org comp4com.org, yeah. yeah. short for Compassion for Communities. Yeah. And then your, your aim, we don't need to talk about this now, is to also uh, 
work amongst the vulnerable or those impoverished here in Nottingham as well? Yes, yes. How we have framed the organisation is that it should be one which is making an impact in Nottingham as well as in, in Zimbabwe. So what, what we're doing at the moment is uh, having discussions with, with some people exploring possibility for partnerships in, in areas where we feel there could be some synergy and, and shared experiences and expertise. So I've been exploring that even this morning before I came into, into this meeting. With, with one of the church leaders in the area to, to see possibilities for, for that kind of thing. So, so yes, and, and Nottingham function and a Zimbabwe function. But of course that calls for believing God for re-engineering my, my, my work time balance but uh, I've had conversations with him and I'm sure he's working something out in that direction. Yes, yes. And uh, now it's really exciting to see that not only has God restored your soul in the sense of energy, enthusiasm, he's given you a vision for more. He's given me, he's given me a vision for more and yet He's given me the assurance that he's made uh, all the resources available. And I just need to tap in and, and uh, not, not be forgetful to pursue what might look like a, a small lead, but also at the same time being conscious not to be drawn into some uh, some traps which the enemy might put along the path to sabotage the God agenda. Yes. So, so, so there is that key thing which which has to be factored in the awareness. And, and sensitivity in all of these things, all of the time seeking to ask the question, is this you? Yeah. Is this the right thing to do? Where's the Lord leading and where's the distraction that's not going to help? Yeah. The discernment yeah. to know the difference yeah. between them. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'd encourage anybody listening to uh, look up Compassion for Communities, uh, dig it out, speak to Joseph if you've got a heart for his work in Zimbabwe or potentially in the future in Nottingham as well. Uh, let's just do a bit of a, a handbrake change here a little yeah. bit. So yeah. when we started the church, which is now over 26 years ago in Arnold, I uh, drew a little map and went to the library. I was interested in the demographics of the surrounding area in Arnold at the yeah. time. This is 26 yeah. years ago. Yeah. I, was just, I was just curious. And I looked it up then and I could find before the internet and everything. Yeah. But it was 96% white, mm -hmm. as in the, the demographic, wasn't yeah. very diverse yeah. in, in either other cultures or colours or anything. Yeah. And, and subsequently, we've been an incredibly white church, which mm -hmm. has uh, always been one of those things that I've spoken to the Lord about, because yeah. I'm not sure yeah. that represents the fullness of heaven mm. or God's kingdom mm. or his church mm. on earth. Yeah. But then even 10 years ago, I was looking the figures up again and it wasn't that dissimilar. It was mm. still a very white area. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I haven't yeah. looked at the very latest figures. I think it is changing. Yeah. Uh, but what has changed certainly is our church, the number mm. of ethnicities. Yeah. But you and Star were very much at the beginning of that. Mm. You joined us. Mm. You talk about coming to a place for rest. Yeah. But you brought something to us at that time. And I don't know if you just want to speak into that for a moment. How, how can we as Eagle's Nest or, or any local church listening to this yeah. ensure that they are welcoming to people uh, of, of different ethnicities, different backgrounds? Mm. Um, for us, when we, when we started ministry, there was this thing which God put in our heart that uh, human beings are human beings no matter the color, 
of their skin. And for those who are genuinely seeking to minister to people, let not the ethnicity, color, or background ever be an issue in your service. And we've come to Eagle's Nest. For us, the idea of being the only people of color at the time that we came. I think you were the only black family at that time, yeah. I think. Yeah. For us, it was neither here nor there. What was critical for us was to feel that we are at the place where God wants us to be. And, and that was it. But to then look at the, 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 the desire and the vision of the, the church, the, the, that prayer to God which says, God, we would love so much to be more diverse than we are. It makes us feel more comfortable. It, it makes you feel like you're welcome when somebody comes to you and they take interest in your welfare. And for us, that's church. So, so we rest in that, but little do we know that we are part of God's answer to your prayers. And, and with, this, with this new focus now, we realize it more than ever before. And, and uh, we still continue to pray and say, God, let your kingdom come. Yes. And may we as Eagle's Nest be a true reflection of your kingdom. Yes, yes, yes. You and Star have definitely been people we've been praying for for a long time, uh, uh, obviously. Uh, but interestingly, I think there's been a, a twofold effect from my perspective. One, uh, just you and Star being such a welcoming family. So, for example, you've got a Nigerian couple living with you now. So, <laughs> on a really practical level, you, you've helped other people settle mm. because you've opened up your home to them. Yeah. But but also, I think I remember my dad talking about this uh, when he moved to the UK from Ireland. And uh, when you walk into a room and you're the only person of that background, yeah. it can be challenging. Yes. And yes. so your very presence, I think, has helped others from uh, different ethnicities feel comfortable. Oh, it's 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 uh, it's, it's good to know. Mm. It's good to know we, without without actively working at it. But uh, this is where you, you, you look back and say, God works in mysterious ways. You just being you has brought us a breakthrough. Wow. Which wow. is incredible. Yes, yes. We, incredible. We, we can only be thankful to him. Mm. Yes, yes. Uh, we're about to conclude. Uh, Joseph, I just want to go back to, you've given advice for people in that wilderness season, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which I think is incredibly helpful. Uh, I wonder if you could just maybe pray briefly mm -hmm. for anybody whose heart is wanting to encounter God like you encountered yeah. him yeah. in their way, in him ministering in his way to them. Yeah. I wonder if you could just pray for them as we finish. Yes. The Lord, the God of all flesh, the King of glory, who knows us all by name. The one who calls the apple, calls us the apple of his eye. God Almighty, the one who's written our names in the palm of his hand. You know each and every one of your children wherever they are in the journey of their life, wherever they are facing challenging that challenges that might appear insurmountable, and yet they could rest assured that there is nothing impossible with God. The restorer, the renewer, 
the one who makes a way where there seems to be no way. The one who has plans for us, plans for good and plans which are not for evil. God Almighty, show up on behalf of your people. Connect them to the answers to their situations. Put people around them. Open their eyes to see those which have been set up by you to deliver your agenda. At the same time, open their eyes for them to see a counterfeit and refuse to engage the counterfeit of the enemy. God, for those who are about to lose hope, bring renewal and restoration. Let them trust in you. Let them lean not on their own understanding, but let them pour out their heart and allow you to lead them. Spirit of God, the one who is our comforter, the one who has been given us to be the leader, the one who has give, been given to us to be the teacher. Comfort those who are in pain, brokenhearted, but lead, lead those who need direction and wisdom. Inspire them afresh, strengthen and empower so that the agenda of the Almighty will be fulfilled in their lives. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Some people might want to just rewind a couple of minutes and just allow that prayer to minister them afresh, maybe time and time again. Joseph, thank you for your time. We pray every blessing on compassion for communities. We pray for many others to come and stand with you okay. and see God's kingdom come, lives transformed both in Zimbabwe and here. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the NG Church Network podcast and conversation. We are passionate about capturing authentic experiences of ordinary lives impacted by an extraordinary God. To find out more about our network, please check out www.ngchurchnetwork.org.uk.